Can we do one prayer? Yes. Amen. We get to pray for Israel. Amen. 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 Everybody pray this prayer with me. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Lion of the tribe of Judah. The Lord Samoa. The Lord Samoa. Commander of the armies of Israel. Commander of the armies of Israel. Commander of the army of the Lord. Commander of the army of the Lord. As the mountains surround Jerusalem. As the mountains surround Jerusalem. So you surround your people. So you surround your people. Right now. Because we know the spirit of Islam is a spirit of intimidation. Yes, hallelujah. But in this house, Amen. we will never walk in fear against Amen. the power of hell. Amen. Amen. Those who believe it say, Amen. 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 Do we hate Muslims? No, we no, could. But we hate the spirit that they operate under. Yes, hallelujah. It's a diabolical, demonic spirit. Yes. Amen. So Ruach Esh Ministries International 
make a declaration today once more. Amen. We will stand for the house of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 83. According to Psalm 83, they want to destroy Israel from the map. The spirit of heaven is at work. Yeah. Mm. But I thank God the Esthers, the Mordecai's will arise. Hallelujah. I said the Esthers and the Mordecai's will arise. Through a spirit of fasting and through a spirit of prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They are marked by the blood. Sealed by the blood. Amen. Protected by the blood. And as we go, we are covered by the blood. Amen. Fire by night and a cloud by day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who believe it say amen. Amen. Now, beloved, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you this morning Evangelist Nigel. Welcome in this house. Thank you for this warm invitation, even a sh short notice to come and to share with you this Sunday. Amen. I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. I'm from South Africa. Yeah. Aye. Really, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm South Africa. Amen. Yes. But I believe that one of our congregation members has to leave very, very soon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> The of those. You see, what I like about the family of God is we don't run from the battle. Can you just down a little bit? Yeah. Amen. We don't run from the battle. We run towards the battle. Amen. But the good news is that as the sovereign Lord is upon you, as you are a chosen people, as you are a holy nation, as you are a royal priest, it's open for our pastor Lord to travel to the Holy Land. I thank you, Father, that your hand of blessing and protection is upon him. I pray, Father, Lord, for joy in the Holy Spirit. I pray for the peace of God that transcends all understanding, Lord. I pray for the other delegates and, delegates and the other people that are coming together. I pray for a, a blessed time of worship, a blessed time of praise, a blessed time, Father, in your holy presence even in the midst of this physical battle and this physical war. We thank you, Father Lord, for the victory that our brothers and sisters have. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 How's everybody this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, 1030. Somebody give me a wave whenever it's time to go for lunch, okay? Um... For those that are at home, welcome to the service today. I pray that you would be blessed also in the presence of God. I also would like to say, if you're at home and you could be here, please come here next week. You are missed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Word of God speaks about not forsaking fellowship together. Yeah. We need to see our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Just a question. Are we okay with the Irish accent? Yes. All okay. good. Hallelujah. Some people in Cape Town just don't get what I say. <laughs> so I'm going to have to speak a little bit slower and a little bit more clearly for yourselves. But it is. It's good to be in the house of God. My name is Nigel. I come from Northern Ireland. Um, I have both Irish and British citizenship. That's just the deal we have in Northern Ireland. So I'm blessed to be called of the Lord. I don't carry a title. I like the title servant. So I am here today to serve the people Amen. of God in Cape Town. Amen. It's a privilege for me to be here among yourselves as well. Amen. So, to 
You like stories. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jesus told stories. Yeah. I like Jesus. Amen. He didn't complicate things. Amen. He made it very, very simple for him. For those who were in need. God spoke to me 25 years ago about South Africa. He placed it on my heart. I'm saved 25 years, but the first nation God put onto my heart was South Africa. I don't think I've been trying to avoid that. But 25 years later, here I am today. But I started my journey last week, actually in Pretoria. I was also preaching last week in uh, Johannesburg. And I got collected by my host, by Lewis, at the airport a couple of weeks ago. And we stopped at a gas station right beside my hotel just to get some petrol. And I went in and there was a man. He looked 60 years old. And he's standing there and he has a sachet of coffee. And he's asking the people, can you give me some hot water? for my coffee. And I realized as I looked at him, this man lives on the streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they wouldn't give him a cup of hot water because he probably asks every day for a cup of hot water. So I said to him, I said, what is it that you need? He says, I need some milk and I need some cookies. Can you help me? I said, I would like to help you, no problem. So we got some milk, we got some bread, we got some cookies. I said, what is your name? He says, my name is Dean. He says, uh, well, you're a white man, yeah? I said, Dean, I've been in this business for a long, long time, and I know that you probably live somewhere close to here. And you probably ask for money at the traffic lights. And he says, yes. I said, Dean, I'm here for five days. I said, I will come and see you tomorrow. So I went the next day, and sure enough, Dean was at the traffic lights, holding a sign, wanting his five rand. Yeah. And we had a conversation. And Dean tells me a little bit more about his life. He says, Nigel, I'm 14 years a heroin addict. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm just looking for a way out. He says, I know Jesus Christ. He says, I've walked with Jesus Christ for many, many years. I've been to rehab. I've been to these Christian organizations. I've done all the programs, but I just seem to not be able to get free of heroin. So the next day, he also has AIDS, is he a, 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 HIV positive as well. The next day I said to Dean, I said, Dean, well, what is it that you want from me? And you know what he said? But believe me, I, I, I've walked the streets of many cities, of many, many nations of the world and spoken to all different kinds of people. And normally somebody with an addiction problem, they're gonna ask for money or ask for some kind of, of help. But I said, Dean, what do you want from me? And Dean said these words, Nigel, I want you to come here every day and just talk to me about Jesus. Yeah. And that really struck a chord in my heart. I said, Dean, the first person that I ever spoke to in South Africa was you. I don't believe in coincidences in the kingdom of God. I'm here for five days. I will come every day and I will talk to you. But I just asked that. We, we, we pray for Dean. He had another friend. His name is Errol. These two men are 36, 36 years old, and they both look older than me. I'm 55. These men look, look like old men. And he says, they've tried the church, they've tried the government, they've tried the programs. But I say there's still room for God. God will have the last word in all of our lives. God will have the last word in all of our circumstances. Because God is sovereign. God is for you. He is not against you. I heard Pastor mentioning earlier on about those who have unsaved loved ones. Yes. I have a pretty big family and I'm the only Christian. I'm the only light in my family. So I want to just take a minute just to pray for your unsaved loved ones. Is that okay? Yes. Now, Father, we thank you for this day that you've given to us. Just like Dean, Lord, your, your word says that you put the lonely into families. And Lord, here is a family. Yes, we think of the families represented in this congregation today. We think of the many people that have loved ones that don't know Jesus. Father, we ask that you would, the same way as you broke Pharaoh's heart, that you softened his heart, 
We ask for that spirit to fall upon our families today. Jesus, you said it's better for me to go to the Father so I can send the helper, the comforter, the counselor. Amen. The Word of God also says that the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts us of our sins, who convinces us of our need for a Savior. So from this place, Lord, as we pray in agreement, we ask that your Spirit would fall upon our families. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Right now, Lord. Speak to their hearts, Lord. We speak salvation, Lord. We speak your perfect plan over our families. I speak a change, Father Lord, that we need more seats for this room. Jesus. Because people will come to Jesus. Our family, our brothers, our sisters, our daughters. We thank you, Father Lord, that we would lose heart. Only that we know that we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living, according to Psalm 27. Father, we speak that over our families today. Help us to be an example, Lord. Help us to be light to these people for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. I have to confess something, Pastor. <laughs> Sometimes the only person in the congregation who can see people sleeping is the preacher. <laughs> Amen. So I'm not going to embarrass anybody. <laughs> I did that in Zambia. Sorry, brother. I don't understand. I do understand. I come back and see you again sometime. Yeah. Is that good? Good. So in Zambia, in Kasama, in the north of uh, Zambia, there was a woman. <laughs> she just she came into the church and she just fell asleep. <laughs> That's even before I started to preach. Yeah. And I, I've never done this before, but I went up, I went over, and I said to everybody, and I woke her up, and I said, you need to listen to this message. <laughs> but the embarrassment was I found out after it was the pastor's wife. <laughs> and then they told me that she gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning to make some kind of little cake. And she goes to the streets and she sells 50 cakes to make money for the family. And I feel really, really bad. I learned my lesson. So my point is that if you see me doing this in the message, okay, that means it's possible somebody beside you has fallen asleep, okay? So if you see me doing that, automatically get the elbows out, okay? And you say, you need to listen to this. This is very, very important, okay? Amen. Amen. You're here for a reason. Yes. You're not traditional people. You haven't come for a religious service. Aye. I've come to this part of the world after 25 years to bring you a word of life. Hallelujah. A word of blessing. Yes. So no sleeping today, okay? <laughs> so, God bless you, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah, we will see him soon. The hand of the sovereign Lord is upon that man. Yes, I mean. So, how long do we get? Is it 35 minutes, 40 minutes? <laughs> As the Lord leads? That's fine. You like stories? I'll tell you another story, okay? <laughs> Escape from a, a lifestyle of alcohol and drugs, I was able to buy a business. Now, I was not a Christian until I was 29. So I'm 24 and I buy a restaurant. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But there's a man, a young man that I grew up with. His name was Paul. His name is Paul. And somebody said, sometimes you hear the rumors whenever your friends get saved. And whenever you hear about your friends getting saved, you don't answer the phone. <laughs> They're gonna, you know, back then we didn't have the cell phones, we just had, yeah, 
the older generation will remember. Yeah. Yeah. But you didn't answer just in case people like Paul were calling. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they want to hang out and be your friend. Mm -hmm. But I'm in my business and I'm working seven days a week. I'm busy. But every Friday Paul would come into the business. And he would start preaching about Jesus Christ. <laughs> the disadvantage of being the owner is you cannot make an excuse. Exactly. You just have to stand there and listen to this man talking about Jesus. But the problem with Paul was Paul would give me a tract. Or he would give me some kind of Christian literature. But Paul was a little bit insistent. Because Paul will come back the next Friday and ask you, did you read that? <laughs> it's like, have you done your homework? And he would ask me questions. So I used to have to go home, probably with a cigarette in my hand, and read this piece of Christian literature. But he had me tortured. Paul wouldn't stop. Do you want to come to church on Sunday? It's like, Paul, I'm busy. You know, Sunday's a busy day. I can't make it to church. And I always made excuses. Now, back in the early 1990s, we had a thing called a cassette. The young people won't remember this. But we had a little cassette, and he came in one day, and he said, Nigel, he says, by the way, if we were at the beach, you would realize that I'm covered in tattoos, okay? In church, you won't realize that I'm covered in tattoos. A man by the name of Sailor Bill tattooed me. He tattooed my sister. He tattooed my father in the 1960s. Sailor Bill was responsible for tattooing everybody in my country. <laughs> but Paul came in one day to the business with this cassette. And he says, Nigel, Nigel, Sailor Bill got saved. Hallelujah. Yeah, he said, hallelujah. I said, so what? <laughs> he said, you have to listen to his testimony. Jesus. Come on. So it took me 15 minutes generally to drive from my business to my home. But this thing was 30 minutes long. Yeah. But back in, the, back in the day with cassettes, you could put it into the, yes. the tape deck. Yeah. But you could press the FF button. Yeah. Do you know what the FF button is? Fast the the fast forward button. <laughs> so I got it in the car after work and put it on. It's like, come on, come on, come on, say it real. Okay, 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 tattoos. Okay, okay. He owned a bar, he owned a restaurant, he owned a lot of things. But I pressed the FF button. Be, and then I listened a bit more and then fast forward it and I had it finished in about seven minutes, you know. Because I knew that Paul was coming in the next week. And Paul was going to ask me every detail about Sailor Bill's conversion to Christianity. So he come in and he asked Do we have any insistent people in this room today? So somebody just pointed at the person who just made them. But we have to be insistent in the right way. Yeah. Yes, yes. We're not talking about insistent with your children about doing dishes yeah. or things like that. Or oh. husband, get out and cut the grass. You know, <laughs> not that kind of insistent. So I had a problem in the business. I was in debt. I owed about $5,000. And I thought, I am in trouble. So I thought, how am I going to get out of this? The bank manager had told me. No more money. We can't give you any more loans. So Paul, coincidentally, come in on the Friday. But I had a meeting with the bank manager on the Monday following. And Paul said for the tenth time, Do you want to go to church on Sunday? And what did I say? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> in the middle of my crisis. In the middle of my difficult time. Of course you call out to Jesus. Yeah. But he's not there just in the storms. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes. Amen. So I said to Paul, yes, I'll go on Sunday. And he's like, he's shot. So he collects me, brings me to church. And uh, we get there a little bit late. And there's probably 300 people maybe in the congregation. And the usher brings us up and sits us down. And who was the man sitting beside me? The bank manager. God is real. God is real. Yes. I'm a heathen. I'm full of darkness. I'm still in the miry clay, but I know now that God is real. This is not a coincidence. Yeah. But I wasn't sure whether it was him or not. So I sat down and I was really straight in my eyeballs to see him. 
see if it was him. Just before the service started, the, 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 the pastor prayer prayed for the word, and as soon as he prayed, he said, like, Oh, wow, the bank manager sitting beside me. So the next day, I go into the bank at 10 o'clock, I have this appointment. If I get money from the bank, my father will always sign as a guarantee, as a guarantor, yeah? So we go in, and the, 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 the bank manager gets up, leaves his seat, comes straight up to me and says, Hello, Nigel, how are you? He says, I didn't know you went to church. <laughs> and my father looked like this. Because <laughs> my lifestyle was very, very different in 1994, yeah? So I said, yeah, yeah, go to church, go to church. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> he didn't even ask me any questions about the business. Yeah. He gave me the $5,000. Hallelujah. And we come out of there and my father said, what was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> you see, even in our ignorance, yes. even in our darkness, God yes. comes through. is moving. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he comes through. No. The story is, this is the truth, I have to tell the truth. The next Friday I'm in the bar and I'm, yeah. So I'm drunk and I'm telling everybody in the bar this story. God is real. If you want to stop in your life, you have to invite Hallelujah! By His grace, it was another, it was another four or five years before I found Christ in 1999. But as a young Christian, I read the story of ten lepers. And do you remember that Jesus healed them? Yes. How many came back to say thank Just you to one. Jesus? Just one. Only one. Only one. And I thought to myself, don't leave. Don't go. It's okay. They'll come back. <laughs> that wasn't part of the sermon. Yeah. <laughs> you like the Irish humor? Yeah, oh, yeah. very nice. So, 1999, I, 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 Jesus finds me, and um, yeah, because the Bible says that He chose me. I didn't choose Him. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I thought, who, who preached to me? Who invited me? Who maybe prayed for me? Who told me about Jesus? And then I thought, Paul. Yes. I'm going to go down to Paul's house, mm. and I'm going to knock his door. Hallelujah. So I went down to Paul's house, and I just knocked the door. I said, Paul, I've got some good news. Mm -hmm. I said, what's the good news, Nigel? I said, I found Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, but what was interesting was I was more excited, and Paul didn't show any excitement at all. <laughs> and Paul, after I'm talking to him for 10 minutes, pouring out just, oh, just fire and yes. oh, the Holy Spirit and love and all of these things, Paul says, Nigel, the truth is I fell away from Jesus. Oh. I said, Paul, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. Anyway, conversation's finished, mm. and I go home, and I'm thinking, yeah, I know where I'm going next Friday night. Yeah. I'm going back to Paul's house. <laughs> <laughs> I went and knocked his door. Oh, yeah. I said, Paul, you want to come to church? Yeah. Paul, you want to come to church? Yeah. You need to read this. You need to listen to this CD. Paul, you want to come to church? The third Friday that I went to his house, he didn't even answer the door. I just saw the curtains. <laughs> there are many people that need to be in church today. Most people don't come to church because they've already been to church. Yeah. Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. There are people in your life that you have to just be that little bolder with. Yeah. We need to go and knock that door today. We need to send that text message today. This house should be full. That's a prophetic word. This house should be full. Amen. There are so many people in this nation, like the deans and like the earls, that need somebody to go and talk to them about Jesus Christ. The Word of God says that you are light. You are salt. We are told in Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2, to arise and shine, for His light has come, and the glory of God is upon you. We're also told that we are anointed in Isaiah 61, anointed to preach good news. And I tell people, people say, but you're an evangelist, Nigel. And I say, yes, I'm an evangelist. It's, 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 
It's not just the responsibility of the pastor. It's just not the responsibility of one person. I will tell you, congregation, as the Word of God says, that you are to be His witnesses yeah. in your Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, yes, and to the ends of the earth. That's what the Word of God says. Yes. It says that He has chosen you. Hey. We haven't chosen Him. Yes. And why are we chosen? We are chosen so that we will produce fruit that will last. Part of my job is that I, I come and speak to people and I try to give them a little bit of a shake. Mm. But I ask through your word, Lord, I ask through your Holy Spirit, by your Holy Spirit, that you will give your people a little bit of a shake today. Amen? Amen. Are we okay? Yes. Amen. Are we comfortable? Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. <laughs> God is good. All the time. So as I read through the Word of God, I read about so many people that do great things for His kingdom. We think of David, we think of Moses, we think of the, the apostles, we think of Paul, and obviously Jesus Himself as the example that, I, that, that, that we need. But the Word of God tells me that we are all part of one body. We have never met before. We might never see each other again this side of eternity. Mm -hmm. But we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We, we are family, part of one body. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to learn to find a way as a congregation, as the wider body in Cape Town, South, South Africa, and the rest of the world. We need to find a way to work together. Oh, we on. really do need to find ways to yeah. work together. Yeah. Anyway, yes, that's, 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 amen. that's a different story, a different sermon for a different day. But mm. you know, what, one of my passions is running. One of my passions was running because there came a point earlier this year that this hip it kind of gave up after eleven years. Yeah, and I've tried to run a couple of times, and I find that after a kilometer, I'm starting to drag mm. this leg. And everything becomes so much more difficult. I know a friend in Northern Ireland, is, his father had an operation and he's lost one of his eyes. So everything has become a little bit more difficult for him as well. And I say to myself that the purpose of the body of Christ, the purpose of your leaders, the purpose of your pastors, is not to drag you from this place to the next place. There has to be a degree of understanding and a degree of obedience and a degree of willingness to follow what God is calling. Yes. Pastor spoke this morning about the pillar of fire, about that cloud that moved. Did you know that whenever that pillar moved, they packed up everything and they followed the presence of God? That is what is expected of us. I can tell you all day that we don't belong to each other. I'm sorry, we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Him. Yes. The Word of God even says that we have become a slave to Christ, that we belong to Him, that He is our Master. Yes. But I think to myself, there's so much more that we can do if we work together. Everybody has a purpose in this room. Everybody has a, a part in the body. Yeah? God has not saved you to leave you sitting in your seats until Jesus returns. Mm. Yeah, there's something to do. I had been a long, long time ago in a small conference in Venezuela. I was in Venezuela for 12 years in Latin America as a preacher. Mm. But after the missions meeting, we went outside and there was an old man. He was 78 years old. And this old man was standing against the wall and the tears were running down his face. And I walked past and I thought, Irish have got a very, very curious nature. So, so I went back and I said, do you mind if I ask what is wrong? He said, young man, he says, I was in church tonight and I heard the missions talk that your friend gave. He said, whenever I was 25 years old, he says, I found Jesus, and I was walking strong with Jesus for five, six, seven months. 
And people would come to me and they would say, God has got a calling on your life to go to the nations and do great things for the kingdom of God. He says, around that time I met a woman, I met a girl. Mm. Around that time I met a girl. And she said to me, I like you, but I don't like your Jesus. You make a choice. If you want to be with me, I don't want to hear any more, any more talk of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He said, it's been 50 years from I've been in a church. My wife died two weeks ago. And coincidentally, I'm walking past this church tonight and you're talking about missions. You're talking about the great commandment, the great commission. And you can see the regret on his face that this man is devastated because he's reminded of the thing that God had placed in his heart 50 years before. Yes. And I remember going home and thinking two things. One, whenever I'm 75, I don't want to see that man in my mirror. You understand? Yes. I don't want to see that reflection of regret yes. whenever I look in the mirror. And number two, whenever I get to heaven, I don't want to meet the person that did the thing that God called me to do. Yeah. This is real. Yes. This is real. This is spirit. This is life. This is eternity. Our time in this world is short. The Word of God tells us in the book of James that we are, we're here for a short time and then we disappear. That we have to make a difference with the portion that has been given to us. You like stories? We'll get to the Word in a few minutes, okay? Whenever I went to Venezuela, my director at the time, I only went with a one-year commitment and I thought, you know what? There's probably not much point in learning Spanish. You know, because I'm only here for one year. Uh, God kept me there for 12 years. <laughs> well, you know, be careful when you pray. Oh, Lord, just be patient. He'd send you to Venezuela for 12 years. Yeah. But my, 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 my friend, my director, Chris, Chris never studied English one day in his life. Spanish speaker. Never studied English. He woke up one day and God had given him English. Amen. Yeah, he spoke perfect English. Hallelujah. And sometimes at night we'd be watching DVDs, watching a movie. And he would look at me and he would say, what does that phrase mean? And I said, well, that phrase means blah, 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 blah. And the next day, whenever he's speaking English, he uses the same phrase. And I'm thinking, I hate him. <laughs> I can't even count the ten in Spanish. Everything is such a burden for me. You know, it's like, why God? I don't hate Krishna. Why is it so easy for some people? Why does he have these leadership skills? Why is he so popular? Why, 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 why? And God silenced me. Just like that. He said, Chris will be responsible for the portion that I've given to him. He said, you be grateful for the portion that I've given to you. Come on. Yeah, from that day I never looked to the left or never looked to the right. I don't care how good you can play the organ. I don't play, care how Come good that you can sing. I'm not competing against you. Hallelujah. I keep my eyes on Jesus. Yes. This is the one that I'm comparing myself to. Not to my brother or not to my sister. Yes. This is a curse upon, it's a curse upon the world. It's a curse upon the church. That we don't want to do anything because we're afraid of what other people yeah. will think. And I tell you today, you need to get serious about what God thinks. Mm. Do you understand? How many times do we read in the Word of God of these people mm. who did great things, but they had to do it yes. on their own? Yeah. And they were misunderstood. Mm. Did you know that Noah was building his boat and warning people for 120 years? Yes. Mm. Can you imagine being at high school, being Noah's children, and everybody pointing the finger and laughing, and everybody walking past every day for 120 years saying, this man's a lunatic? Yeah. Mm. Well, everybody thought he was a lunatic until that first drop of rain. Yay. Well, yeah. So we have to remember, God has called you something specifically to do. You're part of a greater jigsaw puzzle. Your piece is unique. Yes. Yeah. We kept, I used to, I used to, I used to break things. I, I had a Rubik's Cube back in 1981 and I just broke it apart and put it together and showed everybody that I made the Rubik's. I didn't do it. I cheated. 
I'm not good at jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> jigsaw puzzles frustrate me. Sometimes I try and bend things and rip things off and you can't do that. God is in the business of putting us together for a purpose. Yes. And it doesn't matter if you've only got a little bit of blue cloud or a bit of blue sky or you've got a bit of sea or no matter what that detail is, you are important Yes. for that jigsaw puzzle. The puzzle is not complete without you. Amen. 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 Who is missing from our service today? This is what we have to consider every week. Who should be here? Who hasn't been here for six months? It's normally a pride issue. Do you understand? And sometimes as we come in the opposite spirit and we knock on their door and we say, hey, you know what? We love you. We're sorry for offending you. We want you to come back. Please, how can we make this better? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We Jesus, need to yes. work together. So, turning to the word of God, I think of the story of Moses. We know about the Exodus. We know about the great things that God had done. Yeah? Mm. But do we know the history of Moses? We know that he was a Hebrew mm. sentenced to death by Pharaoh. Mm. Who was rescued by the princess, by Pharaoh's daughter. Okay. Who was raised as a prince in Egypt. Mm. But yes. he knew that his blood was not royal. He knew mm. where he came from. He knew that he was a slave. He knew that he was a Hebrew. Mm -hmm. We know the story that he killed mm. one of the guards. Yes. And all of a sudden, he's now guilty. Mm. He has to run. He leaves. He spends the next 40 years, where? In the desert, in the wilderness. Doing what? Looking after sheep. I can't imagine that. You know, for 40 years, you're a prince with a crown, with gold, with jewelry, with fine cloth. Mm. And people respecting you. Mm. And the next day, literally the next day, you're looking after sheep. Mm. But it took that 40 years for... For God to take Egypt out of Moses, yeah? yeah? And sometimes we're in that position as well where we're waiting upon God and we're wondering why he's not responding and God's saying, maybe it's just not time yet. Just keep on shining your light. Keep on witnessing. Keep on inviting. But at the right time, I will lift you up. You remain humble before me. At the right time, I will lift you up. Hallelujah. So 40 more years in this desert and with these sheep, a long time to think about your people. A long time to think about your family. A long time to think, is there even a Hebrew God? Is this God real? If he's real, where is he? The word of God says, I know just for the sake of time, but you can read all of this in Exodus 1, 2, 3, and 4, in the first four chapters of the book of Exodus, okay? If you're a good students, you'll go home today and read it, okay? <laughs> I know it now. Yeah. So God appears in the burning bush. And a lot of Moses' questions over 40 years are answered in one minute. Yeah. He tells them who he is. Yes. He says, I have seen the suffering of my people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Moses is thinking, well, this is good news. But why did you come to me? Mm. Moses has no idea what is coming next. Mm -hmm. He says, so I am sending you. And the reaction of Moses was to step back and then he starts to speak to God. And he starts to make excuses to God. We live in a Christian world. I don't want to go back. By the way, um, I know we're in Africa, but the other side of Africa, in Egypt, in the Old Testament, if you wanted to paint that picture of bondage and slavery and darkness and sin, you made reference to Egypt because that was the place that the Hebrews knew. Do you understand? So, here we're in a position where we've all come from a dark place. We've all came from the same clay. We've all had our feet set on the rock of, of Jesus Christ. But how many of us want to go back to that dark place again? To that place of bondage? The place where you're wanted for murder? Do you understand? But, but, but nobody wants to go back to that but here God is standing beside, in front of Moses and he says now I am sending you and he says who am I that I should go and God says to him I will be with you suppose they ask who sent me I am who I am amen amen what if they don't believe me 
And then God gives them the, these instructions to yeah. show these signs and wonders. And then the next excuse I think was just iconic. He said, but, 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 I, I, I don't know how to speak. Yeah. Forgive me, I'm not mocking anybody, but that's what he did. He, yes. he had this stutter in front of God and he says, I, I, I just don't, don't know how to talk. But I would ask that you take a look in your Bibles in, uh, today as well, later. Acts chapter 7, verse 22. It says that Moses was trained in all the ways of the, Egypt, the Egyptians. He was strong and eloquent yeah. in speech. That's what the Word of God says. Yeah. Well, here we have a contradiction. Where in the book of Acts, recounting the story, they say who Moses is. He's strong and he's eloquent in speech. But the moment that God tells him to do something, he says, I don't know how to talk. Yeah. But then God turns around and says, well, you know, you just keep on making your excuses because your brother Aaron is on his way. Yes. He will help you talk. Yeah. So every time that Moses made an excuse, God had an answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is just not an Old Testament story from three and a half thousand years ago. This is applicable today. I will tell you, if you have been walking with Jesus for any more than five years, you know that God has called you to do something. Yeah. You Come know on. that he's called you to do something. Come on. And over this past number of years, is it possible, is it possible that you've just got yourself into the rhythm of making excuses? Come on. I asked the body of Christ that we examine that today because God God knows, you know, I, 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 just to give you a little bit of perspective. I left home in 2002. As pa Pastor mentioned, I've been to 145 nations. After COVID, 2023, January, I left. I said, God, I'm just going to travel for two years. And God has brought me to a very, very beautiful people today. <laughs> Amen. But I have, in this past 20 months, I've spoken at 144 churches, 220 services, in over 40 nations wow. of the world. Wow. I have a little bit of an understanding of what God is doing in the world. And I can tell you that God is busy. Yes. God is on the move. Hallelujah. God is moving pieces. Yes. We are closer. I mean, as we read through the book of Revelation, believe me, a lot of that is coming to pass right before our very eyes today. Even where Pastor Lionel is going today, oh my goodness, this is the center of what's happening in the book of Revelation. So I would say to the soldiers in the army of God today that we need to rise up. Yeah. That the time of excuses has passed. Really, the time of our ignorance has passed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Men and women of God on this earth with a purpose. And you know what? We can all tell somebody Jesus loves you. Yes. yes. We can all give somebody some chicken and rice. We can all do something to shine our light. That's what we're called for. That's what we're here for. Amen. Amen. I have seen so much across the world. And I know that, 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 that God wants to do something in his church. I also know that Every country that I, this year, the, from July the 3rd, stay with me. Who likes geography? Geography, any geography students in the house? I started in Uganda. I went into Rwanda. I went over to Tanzania. Then into Zambia for three weeks. And then I went over to Namibia, back over to Botswana, back up to Malawi, into Zimbabwe, down to Mozambique. And today I am blessed because I'm in your beautiful nation. Okay. But as I see the body of Christ, I see a lot of people that love Jesus. Amen. I want to worship Jesus. But whenever it comes to doing something Come outside on. these walls, I don't know what percentage of people are actually doing something for the kingdom of God. You are warriors. You are that chosen people. You are that royal priesthood. You are that holy nation set apart for his kingdom purposes do I hear an amen? Amen! We're going to move on. Are we okay for another 10 minutes? Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> I want to get warmed up. Yeah. We'll move on to Jonah. Does anybody like the story of Jonah? Yeah. He didn't make any excuses. He didn't make any excuses. He was told, 
Go out that through that door. That's your emergency exit right there. That's the instruction. Is that is that clear? In case of a fire, everybody goes out through that door. Where did Jonah go? On his way to Tarshish. Yes. He gets on a boat. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. And by the way, he was a prophet. Yeah. You will find him in the Old Testament, in the book of Kings. Yeah? Yes. He was a prophet of the Lord. You might have to put your seatbelts on for this one, okay? <laughs> Crash helmets. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Is that okay? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Jonah, go to Nineveh. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. He ran in the opposite direction. Straight out through that door, straight over that barbed wire fence, and he's going to Tarshish. He's on a boat full of people. And what happened? God sent a storm. Who sent the storm? God. It didn't it wasn't something natural. God sent it. Because this man of God, this prophet, was running in disobedience. They had to throw things overboard. All the all, all of that equipment had to go overboard, yeah. and speakers and everything, yeah. just to try and save the boat to save the people. Yeah. Jonah was downstairs sleeping. The captain he knew who the problem was. Yeah. It's him. I know. It's it's him yeah. because of his disobedience. Yes. He's bringing bringing a curse yes. onto our boat. Yes. And I speak to this to the, the, the pastors, Pastor Clyde. We have to be careful says me. We have to be careful who we let in through our doors. Yeah. We have to be careful who we let behind our pulpit. Amen. Even though they're carrying the title prophet, evangelist, whatever, apostle, whatever that is, you don't know what they could be bringing. Yeah. They could be bringing a curse into your house. Yes. 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 Jonah got onto that boat and all he did was just bring a curse. He didn't bring any blessing to them uh -huh. people. He brought a curse to them people because God sent the storm. Mm -hmm. So what happened? The captain went downstairs and said, he asked these questions, who are you? What have you done? What have you done? Who are you? And he knew who he was. You're a prophet of God. But then Jonah starts to speak this Christian ease language. Of, oh, well, I am a prophet. And he starts to explain who he is. And the captain is scratching his head thinking, I know who you are. You're an absolute hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. Yeah. So he says, okay, we're going to solve this problem. Take me and throw me into the water. And everybody else on the boat is thinking, he's our hero. Amen. Jonah is our hero. He's going to sacrifice himself for us. But the captain is standing there thinking, you're a hypocrite. But there's somebody else there. God's there as well. Yeah. Looking at his heart. I said, yeah, you're a, you are a hypocrite. You're running in obedience to me. But everybody else is looking at you and applauding. The next ship that we build, we're going to put a plaque on the side and we're going to call it Jonah, our hero. And God is there. No, he's not a hero. He's a coward. Now, here's the interesting part. If you read that story again, another four chapters, if you read the story, you will understand that Jonah's people and the Ninevites were enemies. Yeah. The Ninevites were savages. Yeah, that's right. They didn't want anything to do with them. He chose, Jonah chose not to bring the blessing of God to those people. Did you know that there were 120,000 people? 120,000 people who were saved. Eventually, whenever Jonah gets them and preaches repentance, 120,000 people. But Jonah, and the way that he was thinking was, I don't want to see the blessing of God go to yeah. those people. Yeah. Now, I grew up in a divided community. We had a lot of things in common. We had a problem where Catholics and Protestants murdered each other. We, we, yeah. we were at war for years yeah. in Northern Ireland. And I will tell you, in 2024, I know that there are Protestant pastors that believe that the blessing of God should not go to the Catholics. There are Protestant pastors who will tell you that Catholics cannot be saved. And I ask the question, who are we to decide who receives the blessing of God? Who are we to decide where his salvation will go, where his mighty hand of salvation will go? There's only one judge. The word of God says that he came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. 
The Jewish people were, were they were waiting for a David to come with a sword and defeat the Romans. And Jesus just was not so interested in the politics. Believe me, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Uganda, right through the nations that I've been, I'm speaking the same message to the church. God is not so interested in the politics mm. of your land. Yeah. He's concerned about the kingdom of God. He's concerned about the extension of the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So take him and throw him into the water. And that's what they did. And Jonah is thinking, it's all over. You know what he was saying by his actions? I would rather die. I would rather die in them stormy waters than see the blessing of God going to these people. I have to tell you something. We've had a peace in Northern Ireland for 25 years. But I will tell you there is no forgiveness. I will tell you there is no reconciliation. So I asked you as the body of Christ, what kind of peace is that? Now whenever I speak peace over South Africa today, whenever I speak peace over Northern Ireland, I mean the kingdom of God type of peace. Yes. Yes. Where everybody is forgiven. Yes. Amen. Where there is reconciliation of people, yes. as Jesus said, that they would be as one. Yes. This is the kingdom come people. Whether you like it or not, I don't care much about your politics. Yeah. I care about what this word of God says. Amen. That they would be one. Yes, so true. If my people who are called by my name Amen. will humble themselves, seek my face, and pray, and turn from their wicked ways, he's talking to the body of Christ. Yeah. Then I will hear from heaven. I will Aye. answer the prayers and I will heed the South Africa. Hallelujah. He's not ever pointing anybody towards politics or politicians yeah, or putting our it's faith in men. We need to stop that. Politics is important, I agree. But we are people of the kingdom of God. Oh, we have the authority. So they throw Jonah into the water and he thinks that it's over. But the Bible says that God sent a fish. Mm. Who sent the fish? God. 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 I'm so proud of you people. Not one of you have fallen asleep. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> God sent the fish, the whale, and it swallowed Jonah up. And what did he do? He spent three nights and three days. Yes, in the, the belly of the whale. You know what? <laughs> whenever I, I didn't go to Sunday school so much, okay? But whenever I remember being maybe 10 and I went to Sunday school and they were telling the story of Jonah. And they had this like cartoon poster on the wall of the big whale, yeah? But on this cartoon picture, you could see inside. And inside, Jonah was sitting, cooking fish over an open fire. <laughs> that was not true. Jonah was not in there at all, at all, cooking fish over a fire. It was the coolest picture. I can never, I'll, I'll search the internet to see if I can find it. It's not there. It was just my imagination, but that was my image of Jonah. He was getting a bit of alone time in his little man cave, away from the wife, you know. Everything was good. <laughs> it wasn't like that. I had the pleasure of uh, Pastor Clive's uh, company, and Bradley and Pastor Lionel the other day. They showed me around your beautiful country. So beautiful. beautiful yeah. yes. God has blessed you with so much beauty. So I'm talking about people and the land, yeah. <laughs> But we're having this conversation. It's what you do whenever you get over a certain age. You start to talk about diet and all your aches and pains and <laughs> your hip problems. And he's telling me that the benefits of eating garlic. So I'm in one of your supermarkets the other day. I see this little tub of pre-chopped garlic and ginger. And what did I do like an idiot this morning? I had some of that this morning. And it's burning me even as I speak. And the pastor's not here for me to say to him, why did you tell me to dose everything with garlic and ginger? Because I'm burning on the inside. <laughs> Every couple of minutes it's coming back up, you know. And I, I actually said to him this morning, do you have any mints? Because, I mean, I stink of garlic. I can kill people with this, with this, this smell, you know, of garlic. My point is that every few minutes I feel it coming back up. But sometimes whenever we bring that back up, we bring stomach acids back up. Yeah. Now this is what Jonah was experiencing. He wasn't in there having fun. There was no jacuzzi in there. He wasn't cooking fish. 
He wasn't drinking Pepsi Cola. He was suffering. Amen. If you read the story, it tells you that he was suffering and he cried out to God. Amen. And eventually God commanded the fish to vomit him back onto dry ground. Yes. Who commanded the fish? God. God commanded the fish. Who sent the storm? God, God sent, sent the storm. storm. Who sent the fish? God, God sent, sent the fish. He was vomited back onto dry ground. Yeah. And he's laying there on the beach thinking, it's over. Mm. Was it over? Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't over. Chapter 3 says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah again. Yes. Go to Nineveh. Yes. So we know the story that he went. He did. 120,000 people were saved. I also look at the calling of the first disciples. I love the story. If I ever come back, I'll preach on Luke 5. It's a longer passage on the calling of the first disciples. But in Mark chapter 1, it tells us the same story, but it's brief. It says that Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee. He saw yes. Simon and Andrew and he says, come yes. follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Yes. Immediately, they left everything to yes. follow him. Jesus yes. walked a little bit more and saw James and John and he said, come follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Yes. The word of God says, immediately, they followed. Yeah. Now my question to the body of Christ today is, what kind of disciple do you think that God wants in 2024? Does he still want that person that continues to make excuses? Does he still want that person who is running completely in the opposite direction? Or does he want them disciples that immediately, whenever we hear the voice of God, that we respond? We are vessels. That's all we are. We're chosen vessels. Keep clean. Mm. I told you that story earlier. I forgot to say it. With that particular gentleman, that old gentleman, for your young people, be, be, be careful. Be careful who you date. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful who you choose. Amen. Be careful who influences you or takes you away from the church. Yeah. Yeah. Pastors, Come give on. them big sticks out, mom and dad. Give them big sticks out. Keep them boys away. Keep them young girls away. You're praying. You're praying and you're speaking life over your child Come from their born from, from they're in the womb. Yeah. You don't want any wolf to come and take them away whenever they're 17 years Come old. Come on. Come Amen. on. Amen. We have to be careful with these things, people. That's nice. The devil seeks to come and kill and destroy. Everything is good. It's still kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. And we'll finish with this, okay? Matthew 14 speaks about Peter uh, walking on the water. I, I wish I had more time or another day or something because I, I, I speak a lot about Peter. Um... Peter says, if that is you, Lord, walking on the water in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the night, if that is you, call me under the water. Mm. I don't know whether it was a pride thing or just because Peter never, he, he processed everything with his mouth. He didn't process with his brain. Mm. That's what Peter did. A lot of times he would just speak something out. There was no filter. So he said these things and he always wanted to be number one. So he said, if that is you, Lord, call me under the water. As the disciples are like, okay. This is going to be fun. As the whole heavenly host says, did he just say that? He's going to walk on the water. But we know the story. That he steps out of the boat and he starts to walk towards Jesus. But the wind is blowing. The waves are crashing. The rain is stinging his face. And he starts to lose sight of Jesus. And he starts to sink and the fear sets in and that can go for any of us as we're walking and doing something great for the kingdom of God or even something small for the kingdom of God sometimes it's just so easy to lose sight of the Savior and Peter begins to sink and he thinks that he's going to drown and in one moment he calls out and he says Lord save me you know what the word of God says immediately Jesus reached out. Amen. Amen. Now I asked you a question. In the disobedience of Jonah, how long did he cry out to God? Three days and three nights. Before God was gracious. I'm not a judge, but God was gracious. He responded to Jonah. Yes. But I think to myself, I know a lot of Christians across the world, and they question why is God not answering their prayers? And I ask this question after I've spoken this. But well, how quick are you to obey the thing that God has called you to do? Come on. Amen. Amen. 
People have been praying for years, but you're also walking in rebellion to God for years. You want to close your ears. If you, the word of God says about harden, hardening your heart. If you hear the word of the Lord today, do not harden your heart. This is just, this is just too important. This is just too relevant. This is just too happening now. You understand? God wants to get hold of the body and put that army together and march forward for his glory. He responded to Peter immediately simply because whenever Jesus called him, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The Bible says immediately he followed him. So I, I, I would consider that. I would question that. The next time you say to God, why aren't you answering me? my prayers. We know we can't play games with the Word of God. We know what God has spoken to us. I mean, people, <laughs> there's 66 books of instructions here. Yeah. We can't miss it. Yeah. Yeah. You have been a beautiful congregation today. It's been a blessing for me to come and to minister God's Word to you. Can we stand on our feet? Is that okay? Um, Pastor Clay, if you don't mind, I'd like to pray with your people. Is everybody okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give you 10 out of 10. Nobody fell asleep. Nobody threw anything at me. Everybody understood. God has been glorified. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this day that you've given to us. I ask, Lord, for your grace upon our lives. Help us, Lord, to be obedient. Help us, Father, Lord, not to make excuses. Help us to hear your word and immediately respond. We thank you, Father, that you love your children. That you speak to us in different ways. That you're patient with us. That you're gracious. But I ask today that we could all take a step forward in the name of Jesus Christ. And the thing that you've called us to do. We think of those people also that need to come to Jesus. We think of the deans. We think of the, the Pauls that need to come back to Jesus. We think of our friends. We think of our family, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would give us a spirit of boldness. Thank you, Lord, that we do not have a spirit of fear. That we have a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. I speak over this congregation today. I think of people today in this place, or even watching at home, and you do not really know Jesus. You've never had that encounter. Maybe you've been to church for many, many years, but today is the day of salvation. I would ask that just everybody would, would, would pray this, this with me out loud. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. I repent from my sins. I repent from my sins. I ask that you would come into my life. I ask that you come into my life. Thank you, Lord, that you saved me. Thank you, Lord, that you saved me. Help me to keep my eyes upon you. Help me to keep my eyes upon you. Lead me. Lead me. Help me to be obedient. Help me to be obedient. Thank you that you've written my, my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you that you've written my name in the Book of Life. I declare you Lord and Savior today. I declare you Lord and Savior today. Amen. Amen. And Father, we speak a blessing over South Africa today. Amen. We thank you for the love. I ask Lord even from coming from the nations to this nation, I speak unity. I speak love, I speak forgiveness, I speak reconciliation, I speak your kingdom come, I speak humility, Father Lord. We come against the powers and principalities, Lord, that will seek to, to, to destroy, Lord, this great nation, Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, that you have forgiven us. Help us to be an example, Lord, for the people around us. We speak your kingdom come, we speak your will be done, Father Lord, in your church and throughout South Africa today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen.